So Google's AI just cracked a major cancer code, and this is genuinely huge. So let's talk about it. So Google's AI just made a discovery that could actually change how we fight cancer forever. And the crazy part is that it actually found something that human scientists had never thought to look for. So I just was on Twitter and I came across one of the most insane developments in AI because all the time they're talking about new models and new different things. But this is the kind of breakthrough that we really do want because this could genuinely help millions of people. Now, before you click away thinking this is, you know, too complicated or sciencey, just stick with me for a minute because I'm going to break this down in a way that makes complete sense. I'm going to use some simple examples and analogies that anyone can understand because it's pretty mind blowing and I want everyone to understand exactly what happened. So imagine you're trying to solve a puzzle that has stumped the world's smartest people for decades. You've got thousands of puzzle pieces scattered everywhere and nobody can figure out how they fit together. Then someone brings in a super smart AI that looks at all those pieces and says, hey, what if we try combining this piece and that piece and then boom, suddenly a whole piece of this puzzle clicks into pace. Google's AI looked at cancer in a completely new way and found a combination of treatments that could make some of the hardest to treat cancers suddenly beatable. And the best part is that it didn't just guess, it actually tested its idea in real lab experiments and it worked. So let me explain the problem that we currently face. So what are cold tumors and why are they cancer's sneakiest enemy? So let's start with the basics. To understand why this discovery is such a big deal, you need to know about something called cold tumors. And don't worry, this isn't as complicated as it sounds. Just think of your immune system like a security team at the mall. And their job is to spot the troublemakers or their cancer cells and kick them out. And now some troublemakers are easy to spot. They're loud, they're obvious, they're wearing leather jackets, and they're causing a scene. These are like hot tumors. Your security team, immune system, sees them immediately and they deal with them. But then you have the sneaky troublemakers. Those are the ones who just basically hide in plain sight. They blend in perfectly with regular shoppers. These are the cold tumors, and these are just as dangerous. But the security team walks right past them because they can't tell that they're troublemakers at all. And in the cancer world, this is a massive problem. You see, our immune systems are actually pretty good at fighting cancer when they can see it. The issue is that many tumors have basically learned to wear an invisibility cloak. They hide from our immune cells, growing and spreading without ever being detected. And these cold tumors are responsible for some of the most deadliest and hardest to treat cancers. Traditional treatments like chemotherapy can sometimes shrink them, but they often come back because the immune system can't see them to finish the job. It's like trying to clean your house in the dark. You might get some of the mess, but you're going to miss a lot. So here's where things get a bit more technical, but I'm gonna still keep it pretty simple. And this is the antigen presentation problem. The way cancer cells stay hidden involves something called antigen presentation. I know it sounds fancy, but just think of it this way. Every cell in your body is like a house and each house has a front window, which is normal. And normal healthy cells put up signs in their windows that basically say, hey, I'm a good guy. Everything's normal here. And cancer cells are supposed to put up signs that say, help, I'm sick, come fix me. But cold tumor cells are sneaky. They either don't put up any signs at all, or they put up fake everything is fine signs. And your immune system walks right past that neighborhood, looking through those windows. And if they see a help me sign, they rush in to help. But when they see that everything's fine sign, they just keep walking. And this is what they call antigen presentation. It basically is how cells communicate with the immune system. And cold tumors have figured out this, you know, the way to game the system. And that's why they're so dangerous. So essentially, scientists have been trying to figure out how to make these cold tumors hot. Basically, how to force them to put up these help me signs so that the immune system can finally see them and finally do its job. And some of these treatments exist, but they're not very effective and they don't work for everyone. And this is where we have Google's AI. Enter Google's Gemma C2S scale model. And trust me, this is pretty amazing. So Google has been working on AI models for years. You know about ChatGPT and similar tools, but Google actually has their own, you know, somewhat secretive, well, not really secretive, just most people don't know about it, but their own family of AI models called Gemma. And they just created a specialized version for understanding biology. And they call this new model cell to sentence scale 27B or C2S scale for short. The 27B part means it has 27 billion parameters, which is basically like saying it has 27 billion different ways of understanding and processing information. To put that in perspective, it's kind of like having a brain with 27 billion different specialized neurons all working together. Now, Think of C2S scale like a super genius translator who speaks in every language in the world. But instead of translating between human languages like English and Spanish, this AI translates 
the language that cells use to communicate with each other. It can look at what's happening inside every cell and basically read what that cell is trying to say. It's like having someone who can eavesdrop on conversations between your cells and understand exactly what they're talking about, what their problems are, and how they're responding to different situations. Now, what makes this AI special is that it was trained on massive amounts of data about how individual cells behave. We're talking about information from millions and millions of cells and their reactions or their responses to drugs and different treatments. It's like the AI basically went to medical school for every single type of cell in the human body. But this is the really cool part. The AI doesn't just memorize information like a student cramming for a test. It actually starts to understand patterns and connections that humans never noticed. It can look at all this cellular data and say, hey, I see something interesting here that you might have missed. So here's where we get into the scaling discovery. Google discovered something fascinating while building this AI. Just like how bigger, more powerful computers can solve more complex problems, bigger, bigger AI models can understand biology in a way that smaller models can't. They found that there are certain capabilities that only emerge when you make the AI big enough and smart enough. It's kind of like the difference between a kid trying to watch a complex movie versus an adult watching the same movie. The kid might understand the basic plot, but adult picks up the subtle themes, the foreshadowing, the connections that completely go over the kid's head. And smaller AI models could identify known patterns and relationships in cellular biology, stuff that scientists already knew about, but this bigger, more sophisticated model started seeing things that were completely new, and it began making connections that no human scientist ever had thought to make. Now this is where we get to the exciting part. The researchers at Google, working with scientists at Yale University, gave their AI a very specific challenge. They basically said, we need you to find a drug that can make cold tumors hot, but only under certain conditions. And they basically said that they need the AI to find a needle in a haystack, except the haystack was the size of a football stadium and contained about 4,000 different needles, which in this example are potential drugs. And they needed to find one special needle that would work in very specific circumstances. So this is the dual context challenge and this is where things get really clever. The researchers set up what they call a dual context virtual screen. And that sounds super technical, but it's actually a smart approach when you really think about it. Imagine you're testing a new type of fertilizer for plants. You want to find a good fertilizer that will help plants grow, but only when they're in good soil with some existing nutrients. You don't want a fertilizer that works in conditions because that might be too harsh or cause problems. So you set up two test gardens, garden A that has decent soil with some nutrients, like some patients who have some immune activity, and garden B, which is completely sterile, nutrient-free soil, which is isolated cancer cells with no immune context and you want to find fertilizer that makes plants in garden a thrive but doesn't do much in garden b and that's essentially what the researchers did but instead of gardens they used two different cellular environments environment one which was immune context positive these were real samples from actual cancer patients where there was already some immune activity happening the immune system was trying to fight the cancer but it wasn't quite strong enough these were the low levels of something called interferon present Think of interferon as like a weak help sign that cells send out when they're in trouble. And environment two was immune context neutral. And these were isolated cancer cells in a lab dish with no immune system around at all. No interferon, no immune cells, no nothing. Just the cancer cells by themselves. And the AI's job was to test over 4,000 different drugs across both environments and find ones that would boost that help me signal in environment one, but not do much in environment two. And this way, they'd find treatments that would work in real patients who have some immune activity without causing problems in healthy tissue. So the AI started this massive virtual experiment, picture an super intelligent scientist working 24 seven, testing thousands of different drug combinations at lightning speed. It wasn't just randomly trying things, it was trying to understand, you know, and understanding all of that cellular biology to make educated guesses about what might work. And the AI looked at each drug and basically asked itself, based on everything I know about how cells work, what would happen if I added this drug to these different environments? Would it help the cancer cells send out that help me signal, but only when there's already some immune activity present? And most of the drugs that AI tested fell into that predictable categories. Some had no effect at all, and others had effects that were already known to scientists. But then the AI found something that made the researchers do a double take. And this is where the story gets even more exciting. Out of the 4,000 drugs, the AI spotted something that no human scientist had ever connected before. It identified a drug called Silmetacitib, also known as CX4945, and predicted something pretty remarkable about it. So Silmetacitib isn't a new drug. It's actually been around for a while and it's been tested for various cancer treatments. It works by blocking a specific protein called CK2, and that's involved in many cellular processes. And scientists knew it already had some anti-cancer properties 
but nothing revolutionary. And think of Silmatacitib like a wrench in a toolbox. Everyone knew it was a tool and some people had used it for various jobs, but nobody had figured out the one specific job that it was actually perfect for. It's like discovering your regular household wrench is actually the exact tool that you needed to fix on a specific type of problem that nobody has realized. So what the AI predicted was pretty mind blowing. It suggested that Silmatacitib would have a very specific conditional effect. The immune context neutral environment, which is just the cancer cells alone, it would do basically nothing. But in the immune context positive environment, where there was already some interferon present, it would dramatically boost the cancer cells antigen presentation, essentially forcing them to put up those help me signs like we discussed earlier. And this was a completely novel idea. While scientists knew that CK2 was involved in immune system function, nobody had ever suggested that blocking it with somatacitib could specifically enhance antigen presentation in this conditional way. And to understand why this prediction was so brilliant, you need to know a little bit about interferon. Remember how I mentioned earlier that weak help signal? Let me explain it a little bit better. So interferon is like a smoke detector with a dying battery. When your house cell is in trouble, the smoke detector tries to sound an alarm, but it's so weak that the fire department, which is the immune system, can barely hear it. They know something might be wrong, but the signal isn't strong enough for them to rush over and help. And what the AI discovered was essentially a way to install an amplifier on that smoke detector. And that amplifier was a somatacitib. And of course, that amplifier doesn't work on its own. If there's no smoke, no interferon, it doesn't do anything. But if there's already a weak smoke signal, the amplifier makes it loud and clear, enough for the fire department to hear it and respond. Now, interferon is produced naturally by cells when they're under stress or infected, and many cancer patients have low levels of interferon in their tumors, and their cells are trying to call for help, but the signal is too weak to trigger an immune response. And the AI predicted that silmetacitib could amplify this weak signal, but only when interferon was already present. And this conditional effect was crucial because it meant that the treatment would be more targeted. It wouldn't boost immune responses everywhere in the body, which would thus cause harmful side effects, but only in areas where there was already some indication that help was needed. This is where things even get crazier. An AI making a prediction is one thing, but that's not how science works. Science doesn't just accept predictions without proof. So the researchers needed to test whether this AI was actually right. So they took their experiment from the digital world into a real laboratory. They used human neuroendocrine cells, a type of cell that the AI had never seen during its training and this was like testing whether your new recipe works with ingredients you've never cooked before and the lab results were stunning the researchers ran three different tests test one they treated the cells with silmatacitib alone the result nothing happened the cells didn't increase their antigen presentation at all test two they treated the cells with low dose interferon alone the result a small modest increase in antigen presentation barely noticeable test number three they treated the cells with both silmatacitib and low-dose interferon together, and the result, boom, a massive 50% increase in antigen presentation. The AI had been absolutely right. Combination of these two treatments created a synergistic effect, meaning they worked together to create something much more powerful than either could achieve alone. So now that we know Google's AI found a drug combination that can make cancer cells more visible to the immune system, why is this even a big deal? Well, remember these cold tumors that we talked about earlier? sneaky cancers that hide from the immune system, this discovery potentially offers a solution to oncology's biggest challenges. By forcing these hidden tumors to display help me signals, we could finally make them visible to the body's natural cancer fighting mechanisms. It's like finding the light switch in a dark room where you've been trying to clean up a mess. You know, the mess was there, you could bump into it occasionally, but you couldn't see it well enough to clean it up properly. Now suddenly the lights are on, and you can see exactly where the problem areas are and deal with them effectively. This could be revolutionary for cancers that have been resistant to immunotherapy and immunotherapy drugs like checkpoint inhibitors have been miracle treatments for some patients, but they only work when the immune system can already see the cancer to some degree. For patients with cold tumors, these treatments often don't work at all. But if we can turn those cold tumors to hot, suddenly these patients might have new treatment options. And what makes it so promising is that it uses combination therapy, multiple treatments working together. This is increasingly recognized as the future of cancer treatment because cancer is incredibly complex and adaptive. It's like fighting a war on multiple fronts instead of just one. And the beauty of silmatacitib and deferon combination is that each component is relatively safe on its own, but together they create a powerful effect. 
Silmatacitib has already been tested in human clinical trials for other cancer applications, so we know it's generally safe. And interferon is a well-established treatment that's been used for decades. And this means that if further testing confirms its results, the path to human trials could be much faster than if they discovered a completely new drug. Which means we're not starting from scratch, but finding a new way using existing tools. And another exciting aspect of this discovery is its potential for personalized medicine. Because the treatment specifically works in immune context positive environments, doctors could potentially test patients' tumors to see if they have the right conditions for this approach to work. And this could lead to more targeted treatment decisions instead of trying treatments that might or might not work. And doctors could identify which patients are most likely to benefit from this specific combination therapy. It's like having a diagnostic test that tells you whether a particular key will fit the lock before you try to use it. 